Hello, this is the industrial control circuit troubleshooting one fourth module. Now we are doing genius skill test number five. The work order that we received say that the system was unable to operate properly. So what's the problem? Let's dive in. As usual, try to visually check the external device and the circuit for any issue then I will proceed to run the process and observe for any possibility of anomaly. From what I see, I see the lighting did not turn on so maybe this EMO switch was turned on. Now there's a lighting here. Okay, there's a water here and I notice the OL2 overload of the pump is actually tripped there's a button popping out, meaning there's an overload happen. Whether it is a mechanical overload, electrical overload, or process overload. As for electrical overload, it refers as single facing or one face open along the line. It can be the fuse, wire, contactor, overload relay, or the motor winding, or even the loose termination. Okay. As for mechanical overload, it can be due to the pump, impeller, or motor bearing seize, or the conveyor belt, too tight or too loose, etc. As for process overload, it can be due to the upstream downstream valve was shut, or there is a product stuck inside the pump outlet, etc. Most of the time, it's due to the electrical overload or mechanical overload. Okay. So I proceed to press the thermal overload relay and I will put the ammeter tongue to measure the current output from the contactor or the overload relay. Okay. Then I will proceed to drain the water and after that I will start the process by pressing the remote start button. Now the process is running smoothly without any issue. Now agitator is running now. I can check the current at the same time. 3.2 ampere is a very good current, full loop current for the agitator. 21.6 ampere for the heater element. Then I put a tom meter at the pump side to check the current at the pump side so that I can identify it whether it is a mechanical overload or electrical overload. Now reach 70 degree pump is going to run soon. Uh oh there's no current here, there's current here, there's current here. Okay. So the current 14.8 ampere is very high. This one can be considered overload current. Okay, the full loop current is supposed to be around 2.3 something. Okay, by looking at the technical spec, okay, the pump motor should run at 2.5 full loop ampere, FLA, that means full loop current. Okay, so now you get 14.8, it's an overload current. There's a few types of current, okay. Full loop current is a normal current. When the motor running, it must run on the full loop current. It's a must. Okay, another one is a no loop current. That means there's a, may, maybe the pump and motor disengage. So it cost that means there's no load. So motor running on no load, the current will drop. So it's a no load current. The other one overload current. When there is an overload, whether electrical overload or mechanical overload or process overload, you will get the overload current which is higher, maybe seven times higher than the full load current. As for inrush current, inrush current or roto lock current, this is the highest current, maybe more than 10 times of the full loop current during motor is starting. Okay, another one is a earth fault current. Earth fault current is also very high. 
okay but usually we unable to measure because by the time a fault happen the breaker or the fuse the breaker will trip or the fuse will blow immediately okay so now we reset the breaker and then we can check the AC voltage if you want okay for single phase single phase or single line wire usually we measure the phase voltage of course there's no way for you to measure line to line voltage for AC three phase AC supply we have two choices of measuring the voltage we can we can measure single phase or we measure line to line my personal recommendation is always measure the phase voltage as well as line to line voltage in order to get accurate measurement when the process is running okay and it's better we run it we measure line to line voltage well when there's a phase opening at the line at the end of the line we can measure the phase voltage okay just like in this case okay the phase end is open so we can measure the phase voltage okay it's also recommended for three phase supply we, we measure three phase we measure line to line voltage actually it's always recommended to re to recommend to measure okay line to line voltage is for three phase circuit as it is more accurate and can avoid a lot of misleading result okay now we want to check further for single facing because we confirmed there's no current at this line so it means there's a single facing one phase open there's an opening in this particular phase so we had to cut off the power supply perform the lockout takeout and verify the lockout takeout lockout takeout is done properly okay and this we can switch to resistance okay we can measure the resistance okay of the device we want an open okay here and this one you press in the measure okay this line register 0 0.3 ohm meaning there is no open circuit if there's open circuit it will show ol okay then we proceed to measure line to line resistance ol open load ol open load that means this line is open loop or open circuit okay as we know by studying analyzing okay the wiring diagram we know that okay this line is pump pw okay pump motor is a pump motor okay pw terminal board one six terminal board one six is the line that encounter single facing okay so this line having open circuit whether in the wire or inside the motor stator winding however it can be due to loose termination tool not necessarily open circuit so always take the open circuit first before we replace uh, always double confirm by checking the connection okay before we replace any wire okay open the motor junction box check for any loose termination actually the problem is here w it's okay we check all the connection yeah there is a loose connection loose connection is open circuit that's why it's called single facing okay so we double confirm we check the line to line resistance of the model okay since we already opened the junction box we might as well check the line to line resistance in the stator winding tools okay all right 16.2 looks like quite balanced so before we normalize everything okay we can check the motor perform inspection now nah. 
the motor has some burn winding insulation. So since we during inspection we found this issue, we might as well replace the motor. Okay, so because of single facing, it caused overcurrent to flow through the motor winding, and this overcurrent will cause the overload relay to trip. And because the overcurrent, it also burn the winding, so we replace the winding. And now we normalize all the wiring circuit and then remove the lockout takeout on the power supply and then run the process. There's a water inside, so we drain the water first before we start the process. Meanwhile, we should make sure the current will double confirm there is no longer having single facing along this line. Okay? And we can start running the process again. Okay, 2.3 ampere is a full of current, so there's no issue with this process. Always remember, motor must run on full load amp or full load current. Okay, it should not run on no load current or open load current or inrush current. Inrush current only for initial starting stage. Okay.